Alrighty guys, so today I'm going to be talking about how to overclock the 5950X. I'm going to be going over the basics as far as how to configure PBO2, as well as if you happen to have the Asus Dark Hero motherboard or the Asus Crosshair Extreme, then we're going to be going over the dynamic overclock switching as well. That way you guys can go ahead and see how to configure that and maybe find the optimal settings for your processor. So this is going to be a partial guide, however I am going to be using some of the stable settings I've found. I've yet to go through and do complete stability testing as well as go through and actually find the best values for my device. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys the settings and where they are so that way you guys can mess around and tweak them as well. So with that, we're going to go ahead and turn on the computer and spam delete for ASUS. A lot of times it's going to be the delete button that's going to be the most common option, but some motherboards may have a different button and usually they prompt you at the bottom here. This one says delete or F2 to be able to enable that. And it just brings us into the home of the BIOS. So this is an ASUS BIOS. I am on the ASUS Dark Hero motherboard, so I will be configuring it in there. But first, I'm going to go over the basic settings, and then after that, I'm going to go over how to do the dynamic overclock switching. So first things first, if you are on an ASUS board, if you go over to the Extreme Tweaker, they do have overclocking presets. If you click that, you can either load a generic OC preset, which sets it based on air cooling, or you can go with the water-cooled OC preset. If you just click that, it'll ask you if you want to load it, and it'll just set all the figures for you. Then, after you do that, you can just go back, Go into the AI Overclock Tuner, set it to DOCP Standard, that sets it to your RAM's timings for whatever memory you purchased, and then you're all set to go. You can just go ahead and save and exit if you don't feel like doing any further tweaks. But today we're going to be doing something a little more advanced, we're going to be tweaking the settings ourselves, so we're going to go ahead and load the optimized defaults. So, first things first, what I'm going to do is go to the AI Overclock Tuner, set it to DOCP. This is basically like XMP for Intel, but on AMD, so this allows us to load all our memory frequencies and our timings. Now, since I do have 3800 MHz memory, I am going to be setting the F-Clock frequency to half of that. So that's going to be 1900. That just makes sure that we have a 1 to 1 to 1 ratio with our memory and the CPU and the Infinity Fabric, so that way everything is running as smoothly and the max performance it possibly can. So with that, what we're going to do is, on the Dark Hero motherboard, we've got the CPU core ratio per CCX. This we're going to get into a little bit later because that has to do with the dynamic overclock switching. Right now we're just going to focus on the PBO2 and AMD's overclocking so that way you can still maintain your single core performance without losing it due to an all core overclock like you would normally see in the past before PBO2 was announced. So we're going to head over to the advanced tab. If we head down to AMD overclocking, sometimes it'll be in the top of the BIOS, but you're just going to look for that setting. It'll give you a warning letting you know that damage caused is not covered under the manufacturer's warranty. And now we are in the AMD overclocking. So manual CPU overclocking, that's going to be if you want to set a set all core, but we're not going to be doing that today because that is going to lower our gaming performance and unfortunately is not something that you actually want to do on a Ryzen processor nowadays because it does allow us to have better single core and all core performance by using the PBO2. So what we're going to do is go to Precision Boost Overdrive, or PBO, and it's set to Auto right now. We're going to go ahead and set that to Enabled, but we're going to go down to Advanced instead, actually, so we can configure the values ourselves. Now, some stable settings. The PBO limits are going to be usually set to Auto, but you can also set that to Motherboard or Manual. If you go into manual, you're going to want to fine-tune this. You're going to want to find what's best for your CPU. This allows you to adjust the amount of wattage, amperage, and basically total power draw that your CPU can pull. That way it can be stable without overheating, as well as get the best possible score for you at the best possible performance. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set this to motherboard for now just to let my motherboard decide decide how much power it's going to put into the CPU just because I'm not I haven't really gone in and tweaked those settings yet. Going to leave precision boost overdrive scaler on auto. Sometimes I do go into manual and I set it to 4 just because it makes it a little bit better. It pushes it a little bit higher in the voltages, makes it so that way the CPU can draw a little bit more power for a little bit longer compared to what it would normally do on its own. So in the curve optimizer, usually a stable curve optimizer you can go negative and put it as 15. This is what's going to be the default value for the Asus automatic overclock that we spoke about earlier in the video. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that to all cores negative 15. I've yet to go through and actually optimize this for myself like I said earlier. But the CPU boost clock override, we're going to make that positive because we want to go up in our frequency. And I'm actually going to set this to 75. And then for the thermal throttle limit, you usually want to leave that on auto. I've encountered issues in the past where I changed that to a manual number and it caused shutdowns randomly. And it just caused a little bit of issues. So now that we've done that, we've configured our single core overclock. And that will affect all cores as well. So that will boost your performance in all aspects, whether it be creativity or gaming. But now we're going to go ahead and get into a little bit more of the detailed stuff. And we're going to head over to the dynamic overclock switcher. Which is for the Dark Hero and the Asus Crosshair Extreme boards for the X570 lineup. So here we're going to go into the Extreme Tweaker tab. This is for AM this is for Asus users only unfortunately it is only on the two boards that I mentioned previously so unfortunately if you don't have either of these two boards you can look at these settings but they won't really be able to help you in any sort of overclocking because it's not really going to have much of an effect so for this the core VID a stable setting that I found is 1.35 that's usually around the maximum you want to go for a all-core overclock so this will be widely able to be used by many of you users out there and then for the CCX zero ratio for mine I found that a good stable value is 4.7 however it does recommend usually 4.6 on the first CCX so it's going to be 47.00 and then for the second one mine was only stable at 46.00 so that's 4.6 gigahertz now this is the basic frequency that is allowed by the water cooled automatic setting usually it is 46.5 on the top and 46.0 on the bottom so that's the usual settings and then the dynamic overclock switcher we're going to enable that the current threshold we're going to set to 75 because that's the automatic by asus for the 5950x the calibrated temperature to switch back we're going to set to auto hysteresis i find is best when either set at three or five i'm going to keep it at five however because i do want it to have basically the a five second delay between switching between all core and multi-core that way if it does jump up and use a couple cores more for a couple seconds it doesn't plummet the single core performance because it's trying to switch over immediately to the all core overclock it just makes things a little bit more stable so with that, I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to head over to up here at the top where it says resizable bar. I'm going to click that and set that to on. That allows us to enable our smart access memory for our AMD graphics card if you have one. Or it allows you to enable the resizable bar for NVIDIA cards as well if you want to be able to enable that and have more bandwidth between the CPU and the GPU. So, with that, that's pretty much all we have in the BIOS that we need to tweak. 
and then we're gonna go ahead and exit and save changes and reset now we shouldn't get any restarts all the lights should stay on except for the fans cuz those do not stay on when I restart my computer and it should boot right into Windows Yep, so there's the bio screen, that means a posted, and there's the Windows loading screen. So I'm going to go ahead and run a few benchmarks for you guys and go ahead and see just to make sure what the performance is and how it's doing. So I'm going to go ahead and load up Cinebench, as well as Hardware Monitor. That way I can also see what the score is on the megahertz. So that way we can see up here, make sure everything's working properly. So we see that this is almost hitting 5 gigahertz up. See, it just went up to 5.074. So that's good. That means our PBO2 is working. It is boosting higher than the normal one, where just normal PBO is turned on. It'll only go up to 5 gigahertz and 0.25. So I'm going to go ahead and start the multi-core, and here we will see that it immediately goes to those settings that we set earlier. After that 5 second period of switching, so now it's at our 4.7 and our 4.6 for the half of the CPU. Now that number 5 earlier that I put in the hysteresis did lower my score slightly because it did start me off at a lower number because it was remaining on PBO2. However, it does create that stability that we see between gaming when we're trying to not get frame dips as much. However, it is perfectly fine to leave that on auto. So we did beat the second gen Threadripper, the 32 core processor with 64 threads even though we're just on 16 cores and 32 threads so that is more than double the performance per core so what we can do is up here in file you just want to make sure advanced benchmark is checked and then you can check a duration you can either turn it off set it for 10 minutes to test your thermals as well as 30 minutes to test stability so we're just going to turn it on for the 30 minutes. I'm not going to show that all on video, but I am going to start this up just so that way we can start to see some thermals. So I'm going to look in here. It's going to take its five seconds to switch and it switches just fine. I'm going to scroll up. It shows the utilization. And we are only hitting about 75 degrees but we are on a liquid cooler so it'll take a little bit to saturate it'll probably get a little bit hotter if i let it sit here for a while but we can definitely tell we are within check we will most likely not be thermal throttling Alrighty. So with that, that is how to quickly do a beginner's overclock on the Ryzen CPUs. Now this does work on the 5950X with the exact values that I showed. However, the same can be applied to lower model CPUs like the 5900X as well as the 5800X, the 5700X, and the 5600X. All of them are going to have different values, however, so you do want to be wary of that and you do want to basically do your own little troubleshooting and figure out what works best for your chip but with that i wish you guys luck and happy overclocking and i hope this video helped if you guys like this content feel free to leave a like and subscribe i'm going to be doing some more detailed content like this in the future so if you want to see that you definitely want to stay tuned for that so with that we'll see you guys in the next one and bye bye